Welcome to the world of amazing animal flight. Welcome aboard. Right this way. Glad you could make it. Thanks, Henry. I wouldn't miss this for the world. Have you thought of a name for your new airline yet? Yep. It's called Lizard Air, the amazing animal airline. First class ladies, right up front. They're VIPs, very important pussycats. Any more carry-on luggage? Traveling alone? Or is there someone in your pouch? Stinking sections in the back. You. Welcome to Lizard Air. Cat flaps are located there, there, and there. Please make sure all poisonous snakes are stored in the overhead compartments. In the unlikely event you're a turkey, your seat can be used as a nesting device. I hope you enjoy your flight on Lizard Air, the only way to travel. Now, please pay attention to the following safety demonstration. Oops. Hmm. I think maybe you could learn a thing or two by watching this, Henry. Question one, what is flying? Going here to there, in the air. But sometimes, that's just jumping. Okay, flying is what birds do. But have you ever heard of a flying frog who can glide 50 meters on its big webbed feet? That's what I call hip-hop. But it's not really flying. This flying squirrel maybe should have been called the gliding squirrel. Gliding isn't like real flying, because they have to keep stopping. There are all sorts of ways to take to the air. Whether it's floating on the breeze or flying south for the winter, air travel is an amazing adaptation animals use for survival. Plants, too. Some trees even make seeds with wings. Just because you've got wings doesn't mean you can fly. Look at that ostrich. The only flying he's going to do is on a 747. Flying's much easier when you're light and small. Insects were the first animals ever to wing it. Being able to fly is a great way to escape your enemies or to get a bird's eye view when looking for something you need. Like your teddy bear. Like your dinner or a place to nest or a mate. I don't see any volunteers. Thanks to the huge numbers of insects around, there are more animals alive that can fly than can't. That's amazing. Tell me you're the pilot, too. Somebody's got to fly this thing. Now, how do you turn it on? Uh-oh. You better make sure all your equipment is in working order before takeoff. Roger! Aye, aye! And check! Hmm. Visibility! Check! Wings! Check! Ready for takeoff! Wait! What about your landing gear? Got it right here. Everything I need for landing. Shorts, sunglasses, flaps! Flapping! Uh, wiggle this, twiddle that, pull one of these, eeny, meeny, miny, mo! Ah! No! Careful! Henry, watch out! Here we go! You don't know the first thing about aerodynamics, do you, Henry? Of course I do! It's that exercise Mom does to music. That's aerobics. Aerodynamics is the science of moving through air. It tells us exactly how long an animal's wings need to be and how quickly they need to move them. Roger Wilco, dung beetle. Prepare flying apparatus. Extend wings. Right, left. Commence flapping. You're clear for takeoff. Insects have to spend a lot of energy flying due to the weight of their outer skeleton. Birds have it easy, relatively speaking. I didn't know you had birds for relatives. I mean they have their skeletons on the inside, and their bones are light. Some are even hollow, making it easier for them to get off the ground. 
and stay up there. Because insects are heavy for their size, they have to keep those wings beating at a very high rate all the time. It's still not getting him very far. That's because he's hovering. This bird is soaring. Hey, no snoring on the job. Not snoring, soaring. Flight without flapping. See how this black kite uses its tail feathers to steer? I do that with my plane's rudder. Us pilots have to be in complete control all the time. The experts can even refuel or take on cargo without landing. I could do that. But I don't think all my passengers are having the fish. Landing is tricky, too. A soft landing takes agility and precise control, especially for a large bird. This condor needs to slow down gradually for a safe descent. Control tower to condor. Steady as she goes. Control tower to swan. Pond one, clear for landing. Or maybe I should say watering. Soft landings aren't quite as soft on the ground. In the same way that there are different kinds of aircraft, each species of flying animal is adapted to the kind of flying and landing it needs to do. Like aircraft, animals need regular maintenance. Clean feathers are light feathers and the most efficient for in-flight maneuvers, which means a good wash for these turns. At least for the bathtub that size, no one has to wait their turn, do they? Oh, brother. are asked please not to eat each other. I'll be bringing around a selection of tasty snacks shortly. Henry, if you're out here, who's flying the plane in there? Oh, don't worry. I put her on autopilot. Lucky we had an otter on board. Uh, uh, uh. Something, Henry, and quick! Oh, sorry, buddy. You haven't had enough lessons yet. It took me a whole day to learn how to fly this thing. Ahem. Uh, sorry about the disturbance, passengers. We had a beginner at the control. All right, Otter. Back to your seat. Don't be too rough on him, Henry. Even the experts have to face a steep learning curve. Curve? That's more like a learning cliff. Cliffs are safe nesting places for murs, but their food all comes from the sea below. So it's a long way down for your fish supper. Right. Mom and Dad Murr would rather not spend energy carrying fish all the way back to their chicks. So today is flying lessons for the young murs. Mm, I'd rather take the stairs. This chick is warmed up and ready to go. There's his dad going, all right, son, ready, go for it. Help! I'm falling! Use the wings, son, the wings! How's this? That's it, son! You got it! Once the Mer Chick has made his first flight, he'll spend several weeks floating at sea before his wings are developed enough to take off again. But first, he's got to learn how to land! Ouch! Ouch! Each! Splash down! That's one Mer safely at sea. But this little guy has been separated from his father. And his flying instructor. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. The Murr seems to have escaped any serious injury. Its main problem now is how to get out to sea and join its father. I know. Row, 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 your Murr, get me down the stream. Whee, this is fun. 
Where did he go? Last one on the beach is a rotten shorebird. Ta-da! I made it! Where are you? Mer fathers do all the babysitting for their children's first few weeks at sea. And even in a big noisy colony, a father can recognize his child's cry. Yeah. Daddy, buy me an ice cream! With herring sauce on top. Henry, Henry, it's time for your report on flying mammals. What? Now? Yes, now. Out of my way! Journal lizard coming through! Tonight, Owl develops winking problem. And Caterpillar learns to cha-cha-cha-cha-cha. But now, our top story. <laughs> top tipsters confirm twisted tales of Cuddles the Flying Mouse. Amazingly, born with the wings of a wasp and the lips of a love god, Cuddles flew around the world, planting great big smoocheroonies throughout the animal queendom, making felines faint, chickens cheer, and blowfish blush. Cuddles hung up his wings after falling in love with Gloria, the hug-hungry gorilla. After a smooch-tastic honeymoon in Hawaii, they bought a motorhome, a ton of bananas, and drove off sweetly into the sunset. You think they bought it? You couldn't even give it away, Henry. Rats.